Welcome everyone to another video. As apparently many people liked the SGA Octane video much more than for example Sun Floppy videos, I thought it's finally time to give SGI IREX another try and install it on the Octane. For this I already prepared here um, a little bit five minutes ago. Um, the CD amount is of course massive, uh, are this 10 or so? One, two, four. 12, so this is more like 20 CDs, um, also counting the freeware and additional software library and one CD is O2, so I, I wonder why this deck comes with an O2 CD. Also additional um, vPro additional patches, the SNMP access to HP, UX, MIB, whatsoever. Certainly don't need this, I guess. And here's also somewhere, yeah, Octane 2 vPro, so we don't really have an Octane 2 and not a V Pro, so maybe not needing this and register to win. Yeah, we still can win something. I wonder, based documentation, but there also was three CDs freeware and um, general platform demos. So, not everything is really base OS and tele effect. Where was this O2 CD? And hot mixes. Okay, so here <coughs> to better show you the amount. So this is a stack of CDs that I got here with the system, thankfully. Of course, now a nice vintage collection. A decade ago I did not really want to use it. So I wonder what Tiller effect is. And ah here. Uh, O2 out of box experience, whatever that is. So, thanks God I kept this stored so nicely to preserve this for the history. I already did the quick looks because although the Octane is quite big, it does not have space there for a five and a quarter inch full size CD-ROM thing. So we are running this with external cables and adapters with the same extremely old IBM CD-ROM that I also used on the Spark Station 2 and Power Mac 8100. Um, so hard drives I also shortly tested. I have here some SCA hard drives. This may be the original Octane one. Um, it has an SGI IREX disk label, but my x86 kernel is right now built without SGI partition support. Um, I could probably loop back mount this with an offset, but I saved this for another day because this disk is louder anyway, so I'm not going to use this one. Although it is bigger and maybe faster, but in the future we will use this if we test installed it once on this. This is a original SunDisk, um, 4.3 GB and right now there's a vintage Rock Linux on it. I checked this already, so we are test installing on this just to see how it works and later when we got used to installing iRigs, I will most likely use this much bigger disk for a dual boot installation in a month or two. However, I also checked already the CD here. I have the first install CD thing in there. And disk type surprisingly does not give you anything except data track. And we can't mount it on Linux. Can't read Superblock. Um, Underline transfer. Anyway, and I took a look with hex edit because I was already thinking to also wire up code and programs and utilities and things like this. To next also create a bootable CD for T2 to have a real ease that we can publish to people. And I read already other people who experimented with this and have some demo images. They wrote there so the firmware cannot read ISO file system of CDs and um, only maybe only SGI disk labels. So when I look here with hex edit, we immediately see here some SGI label even printed and sash 64 and sash arcs. So it looks very much and there also a 5.12 CD-ROM installation disk here in this clear text. And uh, hex dump, a wonderful tool. And um, yeah, so it really looks that maybe we really need to go through this extra pain and create a non ISO 9660 CD ROM, but some partitioned like thing. 
I will later examine this more. And um, yeah, that's for sure a little bit uncomfortable. If we have to go this route, like this other demo CD created back a decade ago, then we most likely even have to patch the kernel to support using CD-ROMs like hard drives with partition table and such. But we will take a look on this another month. Now we connect all those pieces and try to install IRIX. I make a video about this, um, not only to entertain you also, I tried this only once a decade ago and I did not succeed. The installation started and was doing something, but I did not end it with a bootable system. So I will now take the extra time and efforts to figure out how to get IRIX actually installed. Of course, other people have done this, but just putting the disk in it did not result in some success a decade ago. So let's see how this goes today. I will not screw this into this drive bay, I will just push this in there on some small piece of paper or something. So this is what paper is still used for. The CD-ROM is powered here with my external USB adapter power supply. D1S1 volume header not valid. EFS read error, bad count, unable to open, XIO, blah 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 and so on. IP30. Media not loaded, press enter to return to the menu, prom write error on cache line. So, yeah, whatever. Let's see what we find out next. So actually, <coughs> here are some instructions that I thankfully have, together with some permanent license request form and some end user license agreements here also. Um, but this was not so helpful. Um, and actually I find this quite repetitive. Um, easy overview and more and it's always more or less the same um, not too different not telling too much so I found some internet instructions and it says boot dash f d k s c braces one in the documentation in the internet it said one comma three comma eight however my CD-ROM is at six so I substituted this already and I knew already that 8 is a main volume header or something. So this is SCSI bus 1, SCSI ID 6 in my case, and then slash sash 64. And this indeed loaded some standalone shell SGI version 6.5 here from 2001, 64-bit. And um, yeah, now the documentation says to partition the hard drive. Let's see what happens then. Boot dash F. Um, Stand slash fx64 unable to load, no such file directory. Hmm, yeah, this is why I'm making a video about it because it does not just work by itself. Obviously, each detail counts I overlooked, they had seven there, so eight is a volume header or something, and seven is the petition, and also dash dash x that I didn't happen the first time. What happens now? It's loading something. And also, this is for 64-bit octanes. For 32-bit octanes, this is uh, sash arcs and um, fx.arcs in capital. If you only have one disk, press return through the prompt until you get the menu, menu disk. If you have only one disk, press return. Invalid label from disk driver ignored. Seagate. Please choose one off. Use repartition menu to change. R for repartition. RO for root device. FX repartition root device type of data repartition. Confirm using XFS. 
warning you will need to reinstall all software continue yes where here we see that 8 is a volume header by the way enter dot dot to go up one menu um, L for label the disk Enter SY SY now slash exit to exit FX and restart the system. Okay. Here, so what now? Installation. Boot the mini root. Click on the icon. Install system software. Okay, I've done this earlier, but it didn't work. Unable to open. Media not loaded. This is not the CD ROM. Hmm. It's going super smoothly as you can see. And then people wonder why people are using Linux and not old fashioned Unix systems. Maybe it was related to my Linux stuff having set OS load partition and such. I now reset and fear. And let's see how this goes. Ah, okay, so this was our environment that we used to boot Linux. All the small details, few people know because many people know things about PC and such, but this exotic Unix workstations, all the details are of course much much less known and even I, having done something 10 years ago and uh, done something recently also, I never installed IREX. The only time I tried it was not successful, so let's see where we're getting this time. Box size of file system, uh, what should I know? Hmm. Picture? Maybe not. Huh? So I remember this. I found this quite interesting already a decade ago that this Unix text stuff is running in this kind of firmware graphic container. Of course, this could be faked. Um, installation. Of course it could be faked. I don't recall uh, the details here. If this is already the full IRIX running or just some firmware environment kind of installation program. If the real Unix is running this could be faked that it's just using the same graphic layout but um, anyway it looks interesting for me to have this OS kind of install style running in this firmware text terminal thing. Here let me look up what I need to do next for the installation. Okay, so the installation description here on the internet continues with enter 13 for the admin menu and 11 for MKFS. However, we have just done this, so maybe I skip it. They also note here to use 4K block size for disks over for gigabyte. We are just at the border with this. I think we had 4.3. Maybe I just leave it with this 512 byte sectors and see how that goes. Open the media, so 2 for open the media. Um, I guess CD-ROM disk. By the way, did we have to put one? Yeah, but it's reading something. The IRIX 6512 overlay CD contains a mini root and other components from May 2001. Carefully follow the instructions in the CD booklet there. They do not tell me all those details I had to do. Um, but anyway, if this is not done, your installation will leave disk 1 of the set in and press return. When the disk has been read, it will return and ask you if you want to load another. Keep going with all CDs and be careful about the location. When all of the disks have been read, type done. Okay, I find this a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe we now need to insert 
12 or 13, 14, 15 CDs to read their catalog. Let's see how this goes. I only pressed space to continue the small listing. So, and then it reads this catalog thing. So place me on the maintenance stream or the feature stream here. The problem is, um, how should I know what appropriate is nowadays? They write this here, maintenance stream and feature stream. Intermediate release overlay, space OS foundation for overlay. So, hmm. Understanding release streams. Beginning with RX 6.5, a new software release process delivers RX upgrades to you in an easily manageable and consistent fashion. In this new process, intermediate releases are anchored to the base system release. During the first upgrade to an intermediate release, you are asked to choose either of the two release streams, the maintenance stream or the feature stream. The maintenance stream includes accumulated bug fixes and basic support for new hardware, if any. Feature stream includes everything in the maintenance stream plus any new software features. So I guess we want feature stream, don't we? It's old enough anyway. Warning, the new distributions contain hidden main products but no feature products. See the stream preferences for more information. Hmm. This CD is part of that. If you plan to install from another CD, please insert it now and press enter. So I really wonder if they want us to insert all of this, even the second and third overlay disk. If you break the seal on this package and or use the enclosed software, any included online or printed documentation and or any software that is included with or in a silicon graphics manufacturers. I guess it wants all CDs in there. Huh? Um, manufactured or marketed hardware products, the software you agree to be bound by the terms and conditions of this agreement, the agreement, and this will be legal binding agreement between you and Silicon Graphics Inc. SGI. Please read this document carefully before opening the package and or using the software. If you do not agree with the terms and conditions of this product, you should promptly return the unopened package and the software to the place where you obtained it and you will be given a full refund of any license fee that you paid for such software. Mm -hmm. So, welcome to City Jungling. I wanted to. Maybe I should operate this with gloves. Not to get here bit rot from grease from the fingers. Some oil damaging this aluminium foil.